my landing gear up. That was a very nice, easy way to start the day. Chad is parking his trailer, and uh, we're somewhere here in Texas. He just gave me the pin drop and the time, and uh, here we are. We're going to head out and catch some large map. We've made a little bit of a a uh, run out to a spot, and uh, Chad's going to start us off with a uh, with a tip. You ready? Go. All right, so guys, listen. I love fishing places, having success, and then making adjustments based on the success you had the day before and the conditions that you have the next day. Isn't so, that the point of pre-fishing? So we, yeah, and so we had a windy day yesterday a super cold morning it was so cold like i had to get out of the kayak and walk around uh to warm up yesterday it warmed up throughout the day got up to as high as 80 degrees where the day before that the high was 47. now so we had a bit of a warming trend which means these big fish started moving up they started moving up in a hurry it was they we started seeing so many fish on the flats that jeremy broke out of top water started throwing a top water at 12 30 three four casts in might have even been the second cast he caught a monster we got some intel from that monster. One, they're hitting moving baits. They're willing to hit a topwater, but it actually had a chatterbait hung in the corner of its mouth. Had some like nasty gangrene looking stuff around it. We got the chatterbait out, cleaned it up as best we could, released it, it kicked off healthy. It obviously lived with it in there. It's gonna live without it there. But we have less wind today and the fish didn't get going until later in the day. So I'm making a little bit of an adjustment. I fished a chatterbait most of the day yesterday and I had success on it when the fish were moving and aggressive. But we've got less wind today. It's earlier. So I want something that's gonna stay in the strike zone. I want something that looks like what I just saw a big fish yesterday eat, which is something more of a natural shad color. Even though I caught most of my fish uh, yesterday on a green pumpkin uh, color, the water has cleared up a bit. So by the water clearing up, I can get away with a more light colored natural presentation so i'm going to be fishing the z-man sling blade with the more indiana you know colorado hybrid blade that they've got in a natural you know nickel color because they are uh, really crushing shad i put the z-man minnows um trailer on there to be able to give it a little bit more lift and to allow me to fish it even slower i love this bait because it's light wire but if you don't put a split ring on there at that r bend you run the risk on anything over about five pounds of straightening that wire out and your knot will be up here uh, and you're gonna break off and lose the fish. So it doesn't do any good to hook a big fish if you can't catch it. And we're in one of those rare situations where not only are we fishing in an area where we have a chance at catching big fish, I expect to catch big fish. So what you do is you take a split ring and I'm a big fan of the Spro split rings and you just bend the arm down, drop it over the R bend and then when it springs back, it just kind of locks it in place. And then you tie your knot after that. And I'm not a big fan of leaving my tag ends very long, but I leave it a little bit longer in this scenario just to kind of keep that split ring in place. Uh, I'm a firm believer long tag ends equal uh, lack of confidence in your knots. So I leave a little bit longer tag end. That split ring keeps that bait from opening up with a big fish and you can get away with fishing these light wire baits. And you're probably asking yourself, what does light wire matter? Do you, is it because they see the wire? And that's not what the key is. What happens is, is when you're pulling this thing, that lighter wire, as you pull it, flexes. And so when you start to retrieve this bait, that's the normal profile, but as you retrieve it, it gets down to about like that. So that blade is actually ticking the hook every now and then. It makes the profile more compact. And I'm even gonna fish without a trailer hook because again, that that blade is going to be spinning right above that hook and when they grab it they're hooked so i like that light wire for the ability to pulse that bait and to get that extra little bit of action but i also really like it because it gets that bait down more compact and that blade is spinning right above the hook like so and uh, it's going to be able to reel it a little slower it's going to stay in the strike zone a little bit longer it's going to give them a little bit more time to decide they want it and uh, because it's a light wire and a, and a real small bait it's going to be harder for them to identify it as a fraud. So I'm going to try this for a couple hours. Uh, I already have confidence in the chatterbait here, so I may just kind of switch back and forth. But I'm always looking to not just always throw what I already know I'm going to catch them on. 
I like figuring out other ways to catch them and who knows the catch rate could go through the roof with this or I could waste two hours and go back to the chatterbait but we're gonna try it and this is what making adjustments is all about. We got a dark chatterbait with the uh, five inch and that was what Diesel they were minnow. catching yesterday. What? Darker chatterbaits. Darker That's chatterbaits? All right. Yep. And then the billy goats. So it's it's fairly shallow out there and we're... And straight looking... up, dude, buzzing that billy goat like yeah. a topwater is probably going to be deadly. Okay. You know? I'll do that then. But it's shallow and there's looks like there's a couple stumps out here. There's about 400 stumps. Okay. All right which is also a couple, but it's also more than a couple. <laughs> All right, hooked up on a crankbait, bumping these, these stumps. That's a gar. Uh, I don't want to mess with you. Hmm. Okay. Glad I have long fires. Ah. Oh, good. Thank you. Right, got one on the crankbait. GoPro, start recording. So Jeff, uh, pop fish over there on the crankbait. That's a good one. Really good one. Hit the crankbait. Jump again. Wow. Goodness gracious. Wow. Guess the crankbait was the right move. Okay. How big you think this guy is? That's a. Texas size bass. The weight on this guy and maybe a length. There's the crankbait that I'm used to usually catching smallmouth on in the Susquehanna. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Go ahead and wet that board. Right at 21 inches. And it's about five pound three ounce. What a pretty fish. So the rod I'm using for fishing the crankbait is a St. Croix 4, it's actually a custom, uh, St. Croix 4 uh, medium heavy power spinning rod. And the reason I like a spinning rod to throw crankbaits, I think a lot of folks think, you know, that's hey, weird, why aren't you throwing a bait caster? Um, I can, and I'm just speaking for myself, I can cast further with a spinning rod than I can a bait caster. And I'm not bad at throwing a bait, bait caster, but... You know, I think especially when I fish at home on the, the Susquehanna River, um, that casting distance is very important to me because it gets low and clear and, and those fish see you coming. So, uh, one thing though, if you're making a lot of cast during the course of a day that you want to watch for it, because I'm fishing it on braid, that's the, um, it's actually like a multi-colored braid that I could attach directly to it. It changes color as you as you go through. Um, it kind of overall looks brown on there, but it's designed to be <clears throat> to be camo. And for sure, that's you know if you're going to go straight braid. But I'm not. I'm, I'm going with the. Um, I got a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, and it's not real long. Its its purpose really is to um, where it's colliding with these stumps um, to have a fatter diameter so it doesn't slice into and really you know do that with the the woody structure that's down there I actually want it greater diameter 
But that Albright knot right there, it takes a beating and you gotta inspect it. Right now I think I'm in good shape. I was gonna retie it, but uh, it's still pretty fresh. What you, you look for though is that last little bit of braid before it gets to the fat part of the knot. That's where a break is gonna happen, if it happens. But I think we're in good shape. I will retie this um, before the end of today. You know, I'm, I'm gonna look at it and say, yeah, it's getting a little frayed there. But I'm not quite there yet. Just thought I'd share that little, little tidbit. Chad and I kinda split up. He went to another area, we just kinda came back together here and uh, like to get an update. I know I've I've heard heard some splashes. Know that he's he's caught a couple. Let's zoom over there and uh, get an update and hopefully add to the pattern. That's one of the nice things about fishing with somebody is you know you get to kind of tag team pattern development. So what'd you get your your fish on, man? All right. So my first fish I caught on a booyah buzz bait. Um, I was doing a, my first ever Twitch stream live. So dark. So I like the counter rotating blades. I like that black chrome. And then I like the, the black bait with a little red in it. Yep. Also really like the shape of that head because it's a planing head. It's flat. It gets the bait up on the water surface easier. You got a trailer hook? It also has a trailer hook. Did you get him on the trailer hook or was uh, it? The trailer hook helped, but no, he actually smoked it. Like, the, halo, the trailer hook on a buzz bait does catch some, but more than anything else, it keeps them pinned a lot of times when they come up and they shake their head yeah. and the weight of the bait's outside their mouth, which is, you know, leveraging, help giving them leverage. Okay. So, um, buzz bait, caught the first one on the buzz bait. I tried the spinner bait like I tried to profess this morning was going to be the jam. Didn't turn out to be the jam. Um, saw some crawfish mounds up on the bank and I realized, okay, the crawfish are coming out. Or have come out i dug out the fire crawl color which is really a green pumpkin with red belly on the jack is hammer. that is that yeah and, you're using half and then i paired it up with half of a well two-thirds of a billy goat i cut two rings off okay and put it on there uh, i like the billy goat because it's buoyant it adds a little lift to it i can riddle it a little slower and then if i kill it it stands up on its end uh, nice. the buoyancy of that a last tech plastic. Oh, look at that. And there's one right there from Z Man. Um, I think this is a better fish. Oh, this is definitely a good fish. This is definitely a good fish. So, just like that, they, uh, they eat that jackhammer when you're slow wobbling it. And uh, that's a buck. And right in the corner of the mouth. Pretty much every time. <laughs> and uh, let me turn my camera around real quick. Jeff, Jeff. So yeah, that guy ate the jackhammer. And uh, like I was talking about, you can waffle it along a little slower, but more importantly, it pulls dual representation in my opinion, meaning it represents a bluegill or a brim, but it also represents a crawfish. Uh, not a lot of people think of a blade uh, a, a chatterbait these days as a bladed jig because it's gotten so popular you know rightfully so because z-man made it popular as a chatterbait but it's basically a bladed jig and in this muddy bottom when that bait hits the bottom you can scoot that jig that blade along almost like a shovel kicking up silt but that elastic makes the bait raise up and i catch them a lot of times just dead sticking a jackhammer you know and so that combination is not always the way I fish it in fact I fish a, a jackhammer with a, a Zako from from Yamamoto more than anything else but if I'm killing it and and dead sticking it I like that elastic because it rares up and it gives it a more natural look laying on the bottom but that's a pretty fish got a little bit of blood on the tail so he's definitely starting to establish and uh we're out here in this broken grass and wood. So it seems like the pattern is grass. That broken grass seems to be what's holding them. Um, I'm gonna get this guy measured up for the Catch-22 challenge and get it back in the water.
you get her on? No shatter. Chatterbait. Beautiful. Nice fish, man. Thanks, man. GoPro, stop recording. So it's coming up on two o'clock. I know, Chad, you've got to get back to uh, to the award ceremony for this. Yes. For the day one tournament, the kayak bass fishing tournament. And tell me which which bodies of water people are competing and the fish in Wallace, Black Bayou, the Red River, Caddo, and Bistano. Okay. It's called the Caddo Plus Four Tournament. And uh, last I looked, there were several people over 90 inches. Uh, some names you know, some names you don't. So that's good, good mix. Yeah. Um, but as we've seen today, the fishing has been slow up until this point. The feeding time today, according to Bass Forecast, is 1.30 to 3.30. So I imagine the guys that are in the know, that pace themselves and set their mindset right, have been doing that. They've been pacing themselves so that they don't basically give up before the fishing gets good. Lines out at 3.30. <laughs> right. So uh, you got to catch the fish, photograph it, and, and have it have the photograph timestamp before 3.29 and 59 seconds but you then have an hour to get it uploaded. So there's a lot of strategy that goes into that with this much water and this much land to cover and this many places to fish uh, because you have to find Wi-Fi or a cell signal. That's all part of the strategy and all part of the process with catch photo release. But again, there's a lot of people that have caught fish and uh, there's quite a few people that have some kickers that would make a major upgrade. Uh, Christine Fisher being one of those. Uh, has a couple of small fish on the board, smaller, 17 and a quarter. Uh, if she catches her average of around 18 inches, she's got three or four inches to upgrade. Uh, so all in all, I think the place is fishing the way we expected it. The problem's been pre-fishing was cold and windy and stormy. Today's been bluebird, and uh, it's just going to come down to who could make those adjustments. Right. I know for a fact, if I was fishing when I should today instead of when I could I would have organized gear this morning organized tackle skipped a beautiful sunrise didn't want to be on the water until an hour or so before they were supposed to get active and I would have let the water warm up over the course of the day and I would have fished till probably from noon until probably an hour after dark so sometimes you go fishing when you could instead of when you should and we've caught fish uh we've had I've seen big fish they just weren't I couldn't move them. I couldn't get them to respond to a plastic. Couldn't get them to respond to a moving bait. I couldn't throw something at them to get a reaction bite because that's how they got big. You right. know? But I got some fish, got some upgrades for the Catch-22 Challenge for the state of Texas. And uh, tomorrow I get to focus on Louisiana. Cool. Well, I will join you. Yeah. How long should I stick around? I don't know, an hour. Okay. hour extra. Cool. And then I'll see you at the... Uh, at the award ceremony and you should stick a big one. All right. Good luck. I'll work on it. Thanks, Chad. See that? Drag strap is also really useful for helping your helping you get upright. It's by a uh, Rogue Fishing Company. standing nice stable platform to stand up and paddle and sight fish it's really just physics of compressed gas it doesn't really want to dip down too far hmm. I swear this is totally planned to be my last cast it is three o'clock and uh I need to catch up with with Chad. I totally said last cast. And uh yeah. Got one more with the black jackhammer with the diesel minnow on it, the five incher. Nice. How often does that happen? Where you actually say, hey, last cast, gotta go. So 
yeah, it is three o'clock now. Time for me to uh, to get going. Time to drop the hammer on the Torquedo and uh, get up the road to the KBF award ceremony. See you. Oh, by the way, um, these video cameras that we use, they're our tools as storytellers. You just saw my story of today. There's a second one, and that's Chad's. So hop over to Chad Hoover Fishing, subscribe to him, and see his half of how, how today went here. Thanks for your subscription. See you later.